Hello everyone. About nine months ago on the channel, I released this video post to give it a little bit more punch in which I broke down some of the bass tones in my song Polymetricism. I made that video intending for it to be the first in a series in which I broke down some of the elements of composition and production that went into making the track. But I haven't made a single video since then, so I think it's time we return to this track, Polymetricism. In this video, I'm going to break down a little bit of the compositional process that I took to write this song, and in particular, how I used polymeters. Let's dig in. So I started writing this song just by playing around with an arpeggiated synth patch. I set the arpeggiator to an upwards pattern, and I played chords with seven notes, which meant that the pulse was in a 716 time signature. When the kick drum comes in, it's doing so in 4-4 four, four with a four on the floor rhythm which creates a seven against four polymeter. Whoa, 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 polymeter? I've heard of a polyrhythm before, but what's a polymeter, is that the same thing? Well, polymeters are similar, but they're technically different things. A polyrhythm occurs when two or more evenly spaced rhythms are played over the same amount of time. This could look like three over two, in which three triplets take the same time as two quarter notes. A more complex rhythm might be seven over five, a group of five evenly spaced notes, quintuplets, played at the same time as seven evenly spaced notes, septuplets. A polymeter occurs when differently numbered groupings of the same rhythmic pulse are played simultaneously. Because the groupings are different sizes, their starting notes go out of sync until they reach a common multiple. This could look like five against seven. Here we see groups of five and groups of seven are played against each other. Unlike a five over seven polyrhythm, the seven over five polymeter does not repeat at the start of every sequence. The seven meter must be played five times and the five meter must be played seven times before their starting notes are in sync again. If you're still not 100% on this and you want to know a little bit more about the difference between polymeters and polyrhythms and understand them, I highly recommend this video from Andrew Huang, which is also linked down in the description. So we can see both polymeters and polyrhythms are about the relationship between two differently numbered rhythmic patterns, but they handle it slightly differently. As the name polymetricism suggests, this song uses mostly polymeters and lots of them. The first is this opening polymeter, four against seven. Looking at the kick drum, we see it's playing quarter notes, meaning it hits every fourth sixteenth note. The synth arpeggios are in groups of seven sixteenth notes, so very quickly the arpeggios and the kick lose the synchronization of their starting notes. But because they're both playing sixteenth note rhythms, it doesn't sound rhythmically wonky or unstable. It just creates this shifting groove with different pulses interacting. That was the intro, but at the A section, even more polymeters come in. The synth is still playing arpeggios in groups of seven, but now the kick drum synchronizes with it. The kick drum is hit on every seventh sixteenth note, synchronizing with the first note of each synth arpeggio. Then the hi-hats play a pattern in groups of five, meaning we now have a five against seven polymeter. The 
The snare plays the backbeat, hitting beats two and four, which adds to our polymeter, making it five against seven against eight. The bass also comes in in this section, and if you're curious about how I created the bass tone for this track, make sure to check out the previous video in this series in which I go into detail as to how I created it. The bass isn't playing any consistently repeating pattern, so it doesn't really make the polymeter any more complicated, but it does help ground this groove in 4-4, even though we have all these polymeters swirling around. Now the only other true polymeter in this song occurs at the end, when I have a 4 against 7 polymeter occurring from the interaction of the two arpeggiating synths. The original synth arpeggio is still playing groups of 7, and there is a new one added at the end playing groups of 4. Though I don't use any other distinct polymeters in this track, I was thinking in odd rhythmic groupings as I compose the piece. If we listen to the kick drum in the C section, we can hear groups of 3 16th notes as it's playing this dotted 8th note rhythm. This technically makes a 3 against 2 polymeter with the guitar part, which is playing just straight 8th notes, but because I break the pattern in the kick drum to have it reset at the start of each bar, I don't really count it as a full polymeter. And of course at the end of the song, I end with all parts playing in groups of 5 in unison as the final tag. And that was a little bit of my process composing polymetricism. In the previous video, I talked about how I created some of the bass tones. So if you're curious about that, check out the previous video in this series. If you're interested more in the process of making music and seeing some of my other musical projects, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to download or stream Polymetricism, you're gonna have to wait till the next video in the series.